Welcome to our daily Forex market analysis call and this is uh, in preparation for trading on August 2nd, 2019. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. All right, so as usual, we'll start off by taking a look at our uh, calendar here. So the uh, we had um, Bank of England here. It was pretty much a non-event. Um, now um, our British pound has been driven by the Brexit news more so than than our uh, Bank of England. They haven't really changed anything, so uh, we didn't really see much movement based on that. Now um, our ISM manufacturing PMI numbers for the U.S. were negative. And coming up here, we have um, monetary policy meeting minutes for uh, for Japanese yen here. So um, when Bank of uh, Japan had their uh, monetary policy meeting, our the press conference earlier this week, it was uh, not much of an event. They haven't really changed anything. Everything is steady, so I'm not expecting a big market reaction out of the monetary policy meeting minutes here. And then we have retail sales later in our Asian session here today. So these numbers will have an impact on Australian dollars. So Bank of uh, Reserve Bank of Australia has already been cutting interest rates. So if the numbers for Australia are negative, that will have a negative impact on the um, on Australian dollar here. And a very important thing that happened today, you may have noticed that the market was very, very volatile today. And um, part of the reason here uh, was the, a tweet from President Trump where he said that they are going to put um, tariffs, additional tariffs starting September the 1st on China. So as a result of that, we saw uh, yen crosses just drop. And right now we are operating in a low liquidity in environment. So over the summer months and um, also during Christmas time, we see low liquidity conditions where a lot of people, uh, big traders are away from the markets. And as a result, uh, there are not enough orders, uh, large orders in the market, so market can really get moving. Sorry about that. Okay, the market can really get moving here, um, and we can see a lot of volatility in the market. So especially in the month of August, um, just be careful with um, the market liquidity, with liquidity being low, volatility tends to be high, which means prices can really move. They can just get going and keep on going. The moves tend to be more exaggerated as a result of that. Okay, coming up here tomorrow is the non-farm Friday. Um, we have non-farm payroll numbers out of US. They always um, are for most, most of the time, they tend to move the market, so watch out for that. If the data uh, starts to come negative for the U.S. dollar, that is going to put pressure on Fed to cut rates. So it will be negative for the uh, U.S. dollar if the numbers are uh, numbers drop. We also have trade balance numbers out of Canada. These are very, very important numbers. So Bank of Canada has not been talking about cutting rates. Um, and if you see things like uh, the CPI, uh, trade balance numbers, these numbers drop, and that will put pressure on Bank of Canada to ra cut rates, and um, that, and as a result, we'll see um, our Canadian dollar drop. So that's when we have the big stuff. Other than that, most of the stuff is yellow news, so not as important. So let's move on to our charts here. Uh, as usual, we'll start off uh, with our euro dollar here. So euro, we were looking for a drop. We got that drop, didn't quite make it to the 1020 level. This is 1015, that's over 1020. Didn't quite make it to the 1020 level. Um, and now we have a big pin in the bottom here. Um, as a result of this, uh, so the euro went up today um, after President Tom, uh, Trump's tweets there.
the trade wars are actually not good for the US dollar. That's why we saw US dollar drop as a result. We saw everything else pretty much go up against the US dollar. Um, so as a result, we have this um, bullish pin bar here. However, the um, like I said, the moves are exaggerated. So there are a couple of ways we can look at it. One is to see if price will stay below the high here. So if price stays below 1.1095, so let's say 1.10 level, if they stay below that level, then price is likely to drop here. So even though this is a bullish signal, but if it stays below this level here, then we're likely to see price drop or if price goes into 1.1020, then I will look for price to drop as well. So if it does one of these, then I'm looking for price to drop. Now the target here will be the bottom. I'm looking for price to come and retest this level here. <coughs> and at this point, if it holds above, then I'm looking for price to go back up and it can start trading in a range. So I'm gonna say technically the bias is bullish, but if it holds below 1.10, I will look for it to drop. Should it break above? And then we could go all the way into this um, high here because that was an inefficient move and it could get filled. So our uh, so my first target is to test the bottom of this, which is a 1.103026 level. So let's say three zero. So I would look for price to drop there. If it breaks below that level, then it can go into 1.0920, but we have had a large move. So I'm not looking for really dramatic moves here, unless the numbers come in really positive for the US, then it can really break below. But we have had such big moves this week that we may not see um, more you know, aggressive continuation of that. So I would be careful. Just look for price to retest the low here. If it holds above, I'm looking for price to go back and trade in this range. So right now, my bias is neutral. Pound dollar here, this one did the same thing. We had a drop. Yesterday, we were looking for a drop. We got a nice drop, went into our support level at 1.2080. That was our first target. And now this is where it's holding. So it got pushed up based on President Trump's tweets there. So in this case, I would say, again, look at the high of today. If it holds below 1.2170, I'm looking for price to drop and retest the low of today, which is 1.2060 level. So the move that I would watch out for would be uh, something like this, potential retest um, and a drop. And if it doesn't break below, go back into the range. So non-farm payroll numbers are very important. And when we have important numbers coming out, market can go sideways ahead of those big, uh, sorry, ahead of a big event or uh, big news. So watch out for that. We could see some range bound, mo range bound moves ahead of the non-farm payroll. And when non-farm payroll comes, we're likely to see a lot of volatility in the market again. So with this one, bias is bearish. First target is 1.2060. Second target here would be 1.2020. So bearish bias for pound dollar. Aussie dollar here, yesterday we were looking for a drop. We got that drop, it did a nice pullback and then a drop. So bias is bearish here. Now we do have Australian dollar news coming out, which could change directions here, but bias is bearish. We could get a, a pullback into 1.2830 level and then a drop here. So bearish bias here for Aussie dollar. And in terms of our target, let's go back here. We are into some multi-year lows here. So the next target is the bottom of this pin here, 0 0.6750. So bias is bearish. Um, oops, a little too close there. Okay, so I would look for pullback, potential drop here. And then after this pullback, first target would be the base of today's candle, and then which is 0 0.6790, and then 0 0.6750. So bearish bias for Aussie dollar. 
New Zealand dollar here, this was an indecision candle today. So the important thing here is that price held below this pin that we were um, looking at yesterday. So if price stays below this level, then I would look for price to draw further. So bias today is um, our indecision or neutral, but neutral to bearish is what I would say. It, if it stays below 0 0.65, uh, 65, then I would look for it to draw further. First target 0 0.6520, then 0 0.6480. So bearish bias for New Zealand dollar or neutral to bearish here. Uh, dollar CAD here. This one is interesting. We have bullishness in this candle, but we also have a large pin. Yesterday we were looking for a move up. We got that. And now as long as price holds above 1.3195 level here, this level here, I will look for it to go up higher. Tomorrow though, we have the Canadian numbers coming out and if they are positive, I will look for a further move to the upside. So for now, bias is bullish, but what could happen is that price goes and tests the high and if it doesn't break the high here, today's high, then it could drop. So for now, the bias is bullish and target will be 1.3250. Gold, sorry, silver went all over the place, highly volatile today uh, because of the tweets again. So we've had a move to the upside here and this is a neutral candle close. So this one will literally go in either direction. I would just be careful with this. Gold, um, gold was interesting. When safe haven assets go up, gold goes up, as gold is one of the safe haven assets. So today, um, anytime there is political uh, unrest, there is uh, trade wars or any concerns like that, we see that uh, the Japanese yen strengthens and uh, so do other um, assets that are safe haven assets. So which includes um, gold as being one of them so that we, we saw it go up. But now we are kind of into resistance here. So I think this could drop all the way back into the support at 1410. So this one right now is range bound. Um, I would look for it to maybe do another retest and then drop from there. But basically I'm looking for price to drop. Um, so like I said before, we just have to be careful and wait for prices to readjust today. So oil, huge drop in oil here. And that's bearish now. So in this case here, bias is bearish. I will look for a pullback into 55.60 and then a drop. So first target would be 53.50, uh, then 51.80. So bias is looking bearish for oil. Copper, yesterday we were looking for a drop. We got a lot, we got a big drop. And now we are heading down further. First target is 2.54. And then second target here is 2.52. So copper looking bearish here. Bitcoin, yesterday we had a bullish candle. So we got that bullish move here today. So bias is still bullish. I will look for a pullback and then a further move up into 10,800. So bias is bullish for Bitcoin. S&P, this was again interesting. It had moved all the way up until the news and then it came down. So bearish bias here, this is a big bad engulfing candle. So looking for a pullback and then a drop. 2,900 is the target here. So um, bias is bearish. All right, this one here as well, NASDAQ, same thing. We have a bearish pin bar. First target would be 7,720. And then we could see it come down into 7,600. So bias is bearish for NASDAQ as well. DAX here, DAX is looking bearish. I will look for price to drop further. Uh, first target here again, um, 12,000. Second target, 11,800. So bearish bias for 
uh, DAX. FTSE here, big drop here as well. Bias is bearish. Now we are into support. Keep this in mind. This is our support. And I will look for price to drop below support. And if it holds below, looking for it to drop into the bottom of the range. Target is 73.70. Uh, and last but not least, we have Nikkei, which is a big bearish move here. Again, we were seeing prices go up and then it just took off. So bearish bias here, uh, 208.96. So let's say um, 20,780. Um, we can see it go all the way into the support levels at 20,780. So bias is bearish for Nikkei. All right, any questions before we wrap it up? Okay, no questions, so we'll call it a wrap. You guys have a wonderful evening and I will see you on the weekend. Bye for now.